particularly, I want to thank uh, three individuals, actually more like uh, single out uh, and pay my tribute. One is uh, you know, uh, Nurul Islam, who has def, uh, fed uh, all kinds of historical documentations because he's the man who has been involved most of his life, you know, uh, 50 plus years in this course. Um, without Neural's help, I and my wife, Natalie, who will be speaking here tomorrow, will not be able to conduct uh, what we have uh, conducted. Um, and then the second person, um, who's no longer uh, here in this world, is my uh, thesis advisor. He was the um, American military intelligence officer and German-English interpreter, uh, who interrogated the um, SS officers in 1945, and also he wrote his PhD dissertation on SS, and particularly Heinrich Himmler. Uh, uh, so without, I studied under him for six years at Wisconsin, and he sensitized me to the issue of mass atrocities. And his work was uh, one of the pioneering works uh, published in 1950s when uh, you know the archives were not yet uh, scavenged uh, properly. And um, uh, the third one is uh, my wife who will speak. Because I was Burmese, Buddhist, came from a family that has served in the armed forces, which is now the instrument of genocide, uh, since its inception in 1942-43, during the Second World War, under fascist patronage. And I was also a military officer, uh, cadet admit, at the age of 19, uh, sorry, at the age of 16 in 1979. And so had I stayed the course, meaning I joined the armed forces, I, you know, I would be uh, the, one of the co military commanders either committing atrocities or issuing commands because my contemporaries are shoe-ins for the next uh, commander-in-chief in their uh, mid-50s. That said, uh, I have five points I want to uh, uh, speak on. Uh, Chris Sidoti um, has very admirably, uh, you know, shared his uh, findings, the uh, fact-finding mission findings with all of us this morning. So I will stay away from um, the genocide legal coding, the intent, and also what I think is a deeply flawed uh, interstate treaty genocide convention. And, and most of you know there are two major documents that were adopted in 1948 on December 9th and December 10th. The 9th was the Genocide Convention and the, uh, the 10th was the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Uh, and these documents were shelved for the next 50 years because of the Cold War. And the, you know, the, the architects of the United Nations or the current interstate system did not mean it when they say human rights or prevention or punishment of genocide. The, the, Genocide Convention, with uh, respect to the Rohingya, it was shared for 50 years, from 1948 to 19, I think 98, when Rwanda case was uh, brought uh, you know, to, uh, uh, as a trial, and one of the drafters of the uh, UN Security Council resolution uh, to, that set up the uh, uh, Rwanda Tribunal was a, is a very dear friend uh, of mine. Uh, Gregory Stenton, uh, a known uh, genocide scholar and uh, head of the uh, Genocide Watch. That's why he said, you know, by the time the courts arrived, everyone's dead. That's the case of the Burmese uh, genocide. And that has been the case of all genocide. Name a single continent that human lives where we have not witnessed <coughs> or experienced or undergone a genocide. Name anyone. From the Americas to Australia to Africa to the, the heart of Europe, to uh, Asia, you know, the, the, in the last 40 years uh, or 50 years, Asia has experienced a mass, uh, you know, a mass atrocity. <laughs> and uh, Indonesia, Malaysia, you know, uh, Cambodia, and now Burma. And uh, we have not grown up. We made a fool uh, ourselves. We actually insulted. We insult every time we ignore. Never again. We insult the deaths of Auschwitz, the deaths in the killing fields of Khmer Rouge, the Ru Rwandans, Bosnians, and uh, Srebrenica. I'm a Buddhist. I was raised Buddhist. I don't wear Buddha symbol. I wear never again. Here's a little pin, three euro, from Dhaka. Yeah. And the the, rece the receptionist who sold us this, me and my Rohingya brother, Nisan Lin, 
He said, you know, when she realized that uh, he is Rohingya and Burmese, he said, you know, the world never learns from history or us, us meaning the, the uh, uh, Germany. So the, the conception is simple, straightforward, and there's no legal splitting. Genocide essentially means intentional destruction of a national community, a, a group, a, pe a group of popu a people, population, multiply from the very foundation of physical existence to the spiritual foundations, you know, what type of God they worship or godlessness that they embrace. And that's why like when uh, lawyers and uh, scholars debate whether there is genocidal intent, but the most brilliant response to that conceptually, you know, I'm a social scientist and not a lawyer, so I won't speak legal, legally. Amartya Sen and I share a panel at uh, Harvard in uh, 2014, November. He said, you know, if he, I mean, as you know, uh, Professor Sin is a world uh, leading authority on famines and well-being and <coughs> He said, you know, if you, Deny people, a people, the right to livelihood, the right to nutritional opportunities, the right to learn, uh, earn an income, the right to life's essential services, med medicine, you know, preventative or emergency or long-term care, and the right to literacy, to nurture your community intellectually so that you can develop and flourish. There's only one intent. There's only one intent to have done all of that in my country. Myanmar has done all of that, and this is not new. Genocide did not begin with the killings, you know, under the false pretext of responding to quote-unquote Islamic or Muslim terrorists on August 24th or 25th, 2017. The genocide began and evolved. The genocide began as an attempt by Myanmar military leadership that have adopted anti-Muslim, anti-foreign racism as an institutionalized uh, policy since 1962. Uh, Rohingya's existence 10 years after the um, French Revolution. The Rohingya existed as a, a, a cohesive community. This is from the Asiatic uh, Research Society uh, conference held in uh, Kolkata, 1799. Citizenship law, Burmese citizenship law was adopted, or, or like the, um, this is the con original constitution. Four elements of citizenship, three are related to blood, one is on geographic residency. Anyone who existed within the territories of British Empire at the time of uh, the independence transfer will be entitled. And then that was followed. That's, you know, everyone has equal citizenship rights. But the caveat is like Article 12 of the Constitution takes away what the other Article 11 gives. It says the Parliament can deny and cancel any group citizenship or add any new group citizenship. Yeah? And so what the Burmese are doing is constitutional and legal. The same way what Germany did in the 1930s was made lawful. All genocides are, within the context of the nation, nation state, all genocides are lawful. And finally, uh, I don't have a lot of time, so what I do is, I have a, a this is my um, late great uncle. He was the deputy commander in chief of all Rakhine commands in Rakhine. Today is actually, I don't know if you, uh, old, younger generation Rangers remember, today is very important day, 4th of July. Today was the day that the Rohingya surrender in exchange for full citizenship, recognition of their ethnic identity, and, and peaceful coexistence, not just coexistence, integration in Burma. And my great uncle was there. And so I am here in his memory to say that I stand here, speak truthfully against my country. And finally, I will there are different ways. And see, look, the world does not have an excuse. Bangladesh does not have an excuse. United Nations does not have an excuse that they did not know the nature, the genocidal nature of Burmese persecution. Clippings from 1978, Far Eastern Economic Review, Burma's brand of apartheid. The second one, a story of rape, arson, murder, and destruction. You cut, copy, cut, and paste, change the byline, exactly the same story. So these are waves. Uh, of execution, uh, persecution, and the 
various rationales have been offered with the single intent to destroy Rohingya because we only have three classes of people in Burma. One, Burmese Buddhist to which I belong, the majority that control all institutions. Second, non-Burmese, maybe Buddhist like Rakhine or Shan, but non-dominant groups. They are to be incorporated, integrated into the body politics of our country as second class citizenship. Citizen. And third, people like Rohingya that are deemed uh, uh, the potential proxy for neighboring Bangladesh, they need to be eliminated. This is in consonant with all other genocide, particularly Nazi genocide. In genocidal situation, there are multiple groups who are victimized. And in this case, Rohingyas are the only and most spectacularly wrong people. There are other ethnic communities as well. Thank you very much.